behalf of the League of Women Voters and your community television station, BCTV, I want to welcome you to a conversation with the candidates. The town of Brattleboro has a five-member select board. Three people are elected for three-year terms and two people elected for one-year terms. This March 4th, we're going to be electing one person for a three-year seat. And continuing on the select board are Kate O'Connor and David Gartenstein. Here with me are the candidates for the three open seats in the select board, but they're filled by all the three people <laughs> who are with me. John Allen, Dana McCumber, and uh, David Schools. Schools. We welcome you to a conversation about your thoughts about the town and concerns for the town. Oh, thank and you I'm for very us. grateful thank to you have so you much. here. Thank you so much. Glad to be here. I'd love to know what inspired the three of you to run for and serve in public office. <laughs> uh, I had a weak moment. <laughs> I had a very no. I as I think I said when I was mm -hmm. running in 2008. Um, you know, you, you look at the TV, you watch BCTV, and, uh, and you sit back, and my wife would go, why, why do you, and I would watch the select board meetings and get all upset and uh, throw things at the TV, and she goes, well, then just run. You know, if you think you've got all the answers. I said, I don't have the answers, but my Lord, do we need naked people running in town for a year and a half before we make a decision? That's what, that's what got me going. And then getting into it, it's, it's incredibly rewarding. I, I I really enjoy it. It's um, it's a lot of work, uh, but it's it can be fun work. I mean, it's not all doom and gloom. Oh, I know. It really isn't. It's uh, you know we're running a town of twelve thousand three hundred people, and you know we're not even running it. I mean, we've got great department heads. We have uh, a good staff, so we're just kind of the overseers. And uh, what was your reason? <laughs> It's a really good question. I think for me, uh, there are a few different things that motivated me. One is, um, and I remember saying this often when I was running, I'm passionate about this community. I think it's a very unique community. I also really like to challenge myself to learn. Mm -hmm. And I knew that this was an arena that would um, cause me to think and would stretch me in ways that um, other experiences in my life hadn't. And um, I feel like I've been the beneficiary of good leadership you know, for decades in my life and that it was an opportunity to give back. Um, and it's been nothing but rewarding. It has done all those things. It has challenged me. It has stretched me. It has made me think. Um, it has pointed out the areas where I feel strong and the areas that I really need to push myself and, um, and to you know, research and study and have conversations that are challenging with people who maybe don't love the decisions we're making. And so for all those reasons, it's been a, a great learning experience. It does push you out of your comfort zone. It pushes you right out of your comfort zone. And that's, that's not a bad thing. No, it's not a bad, <laughs> thing. Not a bad thing. David. Well, I, I picked up the paper one day and it, uh, the headline was that a couple of the two of the select board members were not going to run again. And unlike John, I, I couldn't watch some of the meetings. I mean, it just, I don't know how to describe it and I don't want to, you know, defame any particular people, but the right. dynamics were, it, was, it didn't seem to be a group that was looking, and this is over a course of several years, uh, ever made up of a group of people who are really trying to understand each other and trying to solve problems and really focus on the issues. And I looked at that and I thought, well, maybe now's the chance. And um, I had been thinking for a while that, um, looking at cuts and just reducing, reducing the size of government, reducing public expenditures was not, reducing public services was not really a smart thing to do. Um, adding to the unemployment rolls by laying off public workers just didn't seem to be a smart thing to do at, at, in, this, in this current economy. And we also hadn't really, I hadn't heard much conversation about looking for additional revenues, new sources of revenues are actually looking differently at the, the way we value our services. So it just seemed like it was a, a possibility. And so I went and got an application and so did six other people. Mm -hmm. And we had several um, interesting forums and conversations, uh, which I really, I really enjoyed that process. 
and it, it helped me really kind of focus on the things that really I wanted to see, which is economic growth, particularly hiring as many local people for any tax funded projects, that, as many as we can, and also looking at, the, at other, other places for money rather than you know, paring back the hours at the library or the pool or trying to get along with six firefighters on a shift instead of the seven that you need. Let's see if we can find some money. May I zero in on that very question of looking for more sources for money for the community? Are there ideas that are coming up in the select board right now on that? One, one idea is to try to value the services that some of the large, uh, larger nonprofits um, consume that don't that aren't paying pro property taxes, whether by statute or contract or whatever other arrangement. Uh, there are large ones like the hospital and the retreat, and dis dispersed ones like the housing trust, and I'm sure there are several other that I haven't even thought about that um, don't pay property taxes but consume services. Mm -hmm. So trying to identify the value of those services and then um, looking for a way to, to help them, to have them pay for some of the, the costs of what they consume. And another is um, that actually, I, I think we already voted, we voted to put it on the, the ballot, is the uh, local option sales yeah, tax, which is a tax on a lot of things, a 1% tax on a lot of things, not food, not fuel, not expenses mm -hmm. for business, not uh, clothing. But um, anyway, there are a lot of things that are excluded from it, but it's a 1% sales tax that gets collected. It goes up to the state. They give us, I think, 65 or 70 cents out of each dollar back. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's another, another option for raising revenue. And as I remember, taxes like that are voted in by the representative town meeting, right. not by the select board, but have to be proposed by right. the select board. So we, what we decided to do this year is to put it on a, a town-wide ballot for town meeting day, mm -hmm. Mar the March, sec uh, March 4th. 4th, 4th yeah. thank you. And uh, so people can actually vote whether they want it or not. Mm -hmm. We'll look at those results, and the, the town reps will look at those results. Not and all of us are again. in favor of the 1%. I, yeah, I just that's wanna, for sure. I want to point that out. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, this is, this is nothing new to any small town. You know, everybody's trying to figure out how to get revenue into a town. Um, my big thing is, you know, to try to get business to come back into town. But the other thing that is, and I want people out there to, um, the school budget, the high school budget. You know, people have really, we've got to start looking at that more seriously than what we're looking at it now. Uh, it's probably going to make a lot of people mad, but, um, you know, this across the board levying of, of how they do it. What act is that? Act uh, 68. Act 68. The funding formula. Right. You know, I just don't think it's working. You know, and that's just my thought on it. I'm not a, believe me, I am not uh, an economist. I balance my checkbook and that's about it. So, but, you know, I think that's one area to look at. Um, we're trying, you know, we're, we're doing our best to try to get people to come into town. It's, it's hard. The economy's down, but, you know, Brattleboro is a unique a unique town, so. One and only Brattleboro, the I one think. One and only, <laughs> and uh, you know, it's got a lot going for it. We just need to and the, put it out there. The man for whom it was, the town was named never visited it. Never came uh, there. Right. No. Nope. Pete Seeger visited Brattle Street in Brattleboro. <laughs> right. In, in, in I think but, we also are um, just mindful of that it can be difficult to own and run a business here. Um, for many, many different reasons. And, you know, so whenever there's an opportunity to support people that are doing the local businesses, I think the select board is cognizant of that. Um, and sometimes I think when I look at the resources we have in this town, it seems like part of our work isn't just to increase revenue, although that's important, but also to think about the redistribution. So to look at the resources we do have and figure out how we can make that work more efficiently. And it's not just dollar resources, it's, it's human resources as well. And I think this town is wealthy um, in that particular way. Just one more thing, and I, I just thought of it as we were talking back and forth here. We can't forget, and, and people out there in TV land can't forget that the select board really doesn't have control over the budget. That's true. So representative town meeting, um, 
And maybe we have to look at that. Maybe we have to look at a different form of, because I don't know if it's representative anymore mm -hmm. of, of what's going on in town. They can up it or lower it either way. Mm -hmm. We All we do as a board is we sit there week after week after week and try to find ways of getting the budget down mm -hmm. and then it goes to a meeting and they can... <laughs> have their way with it. They can have their way with it. <laughs> well, from a governmental point of view, a uh, matter of fact, an old league member who has since died gave me a sheaf of material that she had collected on the representative town meeting because it's not representative. It's, it's not. You elect someone and they go to the first and only major meeting two weeks later yep. and they have no contact with constituents and no mm -hmm. constituents as such. Yep. That would be quite a major change. Uh, we've had a charter change mm -hmm. that... Um, really didn't change things but two years ago. I, was, I looked back on my notes. Mm -hmm. uh, so is that kind of major change thinking coming to the select board? I think everything is on the table. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I, I really do. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that there's any. We have got to get a better voter turnout. We have got to get more economic development in town. We've got, you know, so there's a lot of things that um, that we have to do, and and again, I, I don't know if that's our best form of government. Um, so, I, 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 I think you're right. The um, I don't know. We've talked about, we. There, there's something you mentioned that I didn't know anything about until you mentioned it, and then I went and got a copy of the Matrix um, yeah. study that talks about a series of things, and some of them are, are slight changes or redirections, and some of them are pretty serious overhauls. And I think that and the, the process we went through with the, um, with the budget and the work we're going to have to do for the other initiatives that we've talked about here today and, and at the select board is going to require us to kind of to look very broadly. And although the topic of the actual form of governance, I don't think it's come up directly other than the, the young people that brought the 16-year-olds uh, in, engaged with the 16-year-olds with the right to vote. Uh, but I, I, I think it's going to come up as a part of that process. If it turns out that we keep getting decisions from the representative assembly that are, are bad, it turn out to have um, negative consequences for the town, then maybe there is something wrong with it. Uh, I don't have a solution off the top of my head for it, but it's definitely this not is representative. This time to explore things. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And Donna, you had mentioned the, the search for a new town manager, all three of you had. Where do things stand with that? Yeah, where do they stand? Where do they stand? Uh, well, we are about to embark on um, the beginning of our two. second, second search. search. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think that there, we wanted to let a little bit of time go by mm -hmm. because um, it felt important to sort of um, invite a fresh applicant pool. And what I respect is that, you know, it was a considerable amount of time and work and energy to pour over the the number of applications and resumes we received, but it feels important enough to really land um, the right person, the right person for this time, the right person for this place, and we were looking for somebody with vision. Now, having said that, I also want to say that I think um, the interim town manager is doing a, f you know, a phenomenal job, that the town has been very stable and steady, and um, so that's a shout out to Patrick. He has held things uh, really consistently and skillfully, and we're privileged to be taking our time um, so that it's not an emergency hire. But it really feels important to, um, to do round two and to put in those hours. And hopefully we'll be, you know, we're, we're past the budget work for the most part now. Um, and so we have a new, a new wave of energy and time and attention to put toward that. It's a little bit, I think there, there's, we have more information now um, than we did a few months ago when we did the first process, particularly in terms of the um, economic development future. We know about Vermont Yankee now, for one thing, but also the um, c community economic development survey, CDs, CEDS, SEDS. Um, process, and, and the document that was submitted, I think, to the feds for some sort of um, stamp and um, the $10 million that f hopefully will come our way for economic development from Entergy 
really has kind of changed the circumstances because there's a, there have been lots of plans for economic development over the years. It's very difficult no to, money. yeah, there's no resources. And that this may be a different time. And if we're hiring a new manager with hopefully with a, a vision in that direction and um, the, uh, the BDCC just got a new director, uh, Pat Moulton Powden, who sees things very much that, that way. The Career Center is about to get a new director. Um, hopefully that will be someone who wants to look at the local economy and look and be in close relationship with business people to, to use the resources of the center to, um, to help pro provide a, 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 a skilled workforce. The, um, there's a lot of things going on, plus this big construction project here with the police fire and soon the uh, housing authorities new um, building on uh, Fairground Road. Well, it's all Brooks House is, and the twenty-four million dollar Brooks House project. I mean, there's a lot of economic activity mm -hmm. in there the town. There is a lot of building going on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One, mean, of, yeah. one of my notes as I was thinking about what to talk yeah. about with you all is the major infrastructure work that's being done in town. You don't have to and worry about talking. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to we, worry about We this. can talk. <laughs> Believe me, we know how to talk. It's, the, it's yeah, never those, been a problem. Yeah. Mm. Those things and the um, and the sewer, the new sewer mm -hmm. sewer plant. Is as John yeah. Allen knows, I've been very much involved in housing in the town, particularly housing for elders, because I'm a commissioner of the housing authority. Mm -hmm. And um, our project, Red Clover Commons on Fairground Road, mm -hmm. is the beginning, but not the end, of trying to relocate everyone who was at Melrose. That's right. And indeed to Poor rebuild Melrose. around uh, Hayes Court, yeah. right. which many of the housing authority buildings are reaching their e the end of their usable life. Mm -hmm. Certainly Red Clover Commons is going to be a combination private-public partnership. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering whether that mode of, op of funding is one the select board has looked at, what your thoughts are about it. You haven't spoken first. Would you like to? Um, no, you're <laughs> it's a short answer. It's it's a sh I mean, I think it's a great idea. I think it's a great idea. Um, I don't think that we have talked at length about that, but I think, um, you know, it's, I, I think we need to explore all manner of options at this point in time. And I think that project um, is one that, you know, um, has been is is successfully in the works mm -hmm. and, it is. Um, and necessary and vital and important and you know a good example. It has really made yeah. a difference to have the enthusiasm of the select board. Oh yeah, I yeah. you know I I've always said I don't think we we do enough for the elderly and uh, to try to get them decent housing or <clears throat> decent medical or and I would love to see you know I would love to see the next step of of trying to get something incorporated with. Um, you know, where you have in-house um, health care, mm -hmm. you know, in, assisted in, living, in, yeah. assisted Actually, living and uh, we do have, yeah, not in-house, but a network uh, you have of health care right. mm -hmm. uh, through the uh, local providers, right, mm -hmm. we call it a local table, right, mm -hmm. uh, I would still love to see mm -hmm. a you know, just something that's all inclusive and housing and connected with healthcare mm -hmm. yeah. is more and more the way yeah. uh, healthcare is coming. And a beautiful facility. Yeah. It is. I want to back up to John's uh, comment very briefly that not everybody is in favor of a local option tax, <laughs> and to ask the broader question: how you deal with uh, decisions that you make that other people don't agree with? Respectfully. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's a good way. Yeah. I, I, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's that's part of the job. Mm -hmm. It's just part of it. You're just not going to please 100% of the people. Yeah. And when you finally realize that, and you're you you get some shoulders, and you you know you let it, and you just let it wash away. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you're not going to win them all. You're not going to lose them all. Mm -hmm. So you just, Dick DeGray, you know, told me a long time ago, he just, when he loses one, he just brushes his pants off mm -hmm. and, and you move on. And that was good advice for me. Mm -hmm. So, uh, mm -hmm. and I, that's what I try to do. Believe me, we all take it personally, yeah. you know, but yeah, you, just, yeah. you just, you just got to kind of roll with it. Mm -hmm. and, and some people you have to, I mean, sometimes it, it's, you, you can't really dismiss people. But um, a lot of, I find myself on the phone 
for long periods of time. Somebody yeah. called me yesterday and it was, you know, looked like, I thought it'd be a five minute conversation. It was 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I, luckily we, find, we have a little like, button I can push now so I can be on a speakerphone so I can actually cook dinner and, and put some hinges on a cabinet door and other things while I was talking. But you spend a lot of time talking to people and trying to explain the perspective, particularly with the police fire, for people who haven't visited these buildings or aren't aware that we've been putting things off for 30 or 40 years that now have come to the point where we just can't anymore, which is why it's so expensive. A lot of people just don't know that. They just figure, well, you know, everything seems to be working fine. Why do we need this? And I think um, it's just, I think John's right. You have to let some of it just kind of fall off, but you also have to spend a lot of time trying to explain to people with the, the basis of the decisions. And I think that this select board has really worked at being transparent um, and talking about things openly. I think David Gartenstein does an amazing job as chair. Um, he's very honest. He's very proactive. Um, there, I think it's important for the town to be able to understand decisions as they're being made and for us to be able to grapple with challenging um, situations openly. Mm -hmm. And I think it's good that people pick up the phone and call us to either say, that great job, we really appreciate that, and or... Or what were you thinking? Or what were you thinking? <laughs> which is what a lot of people said yeah. when I was getting my petition signed. Yes. And getting, are you out of your are mind? Are you out of your mind? And Those that, people are crazy. Yes. Right. So that, that, was, that was the beginning for me of really getting a sense of how people view this opportunity to serve, which is, you know, many, many people don't want to come anywhere near it, which saddens me because I think it's an important thing to be able to do. And it's important to be able to agree with one another and respectfully disagree. And as David mentioned earlier on, we all bring our best thinking. You know, some of us know more about certain areas and, and others know other things. And I think we combine those skills to try to move forward. And the last thing I want to say is that um, this board, I feel like, really cares about the future going forward. And so if we have any extra time in our agenda or if we have the opportunity to think about decisions we might be able to make that will, that will you know, benefit the town going forward, that we're willing to sit with those hard circumstances and maybe make a decision that's not very popular, but to try to do that from an informed place. Um, I think one of the things that, that and you, I don't want you running out of time here, no, and I'll make this quickly, I'll that, that I love about this board, and, and I think the town has recognized, is that we're working pretty well together. And, I'm, you know, and I, I don't think it's empathy or whatever that people didn't come out and take out a petition. I just think that they're satisfied. That they're sat and everything is, it's not in turmoil. Mm -hmm. We don't have all the answers, but we we're we, and we admit it <laughs> and we're never going to have all the right. answers so this kind of comes back to when we talk about the sewer plant too but it, it's it it has to do with this question as well in terms of dealing with people that um that disagree is that and i, I didn't realize it was you, the board you were on because that was when the sewer plant started but that board appointed um i guess asked for volunteers the way we have appointed a, a, a public um a public committee to an advisory uh, committee to work with the engineers, work with the contractors, work with the town staff to bring all the, bring those questions and make sure things are, are going well. And that, I mean, aside from coming in under budget, uh, which is always welcome, it's, it was really without a hitch, without major conflicts and without any, um, you know, big explosions or turmoil over the process because there was there was public oversight and it was broad. It was a broad committee, mm -hmm. and we I, and so that was really smart thing to do. A really a good way to decision. run a big project. There's only three minutes left. So we did okay. We did the same thing. <laughs> How we am I did, doing? Yeah. You're doing well. You're we did well. the same thing. We did the same thing with the police fire. There's, yeah. a, mm -hmm. there's an eight member public uh, advisory committee with the skate park location. There's now a public yeah. committee that's looking into that. And what they come up with, that's where it's going. I'm pretty sure that we're going to go along with Second that. time round for this select yeah. board seems to work well. Yeah. And we then hope. the other thing is the, the, um, is the uh, skating rink and the compressor and, and making sure we have ice there for the winter activities, the same thing. It's, it was somewhat controversial, somewhat confused. Now we've got a public oversight advisory group that's going to solve it. So the qu quick question, how do you get information on what's going on in town? And 
besides calling you up and talking for 45 minutes, how can people let you know what they're, they're uh, concerned about? I think in any way that works. I mean, people will stop, stop me. Street. I walk the town yep. almost every day. It's early in the morning. People are happy to stop and talk about the tax rate or something that's on their mind. I think we all get numerous email, and our email, you know, is mm -hmm. accessible, mm -hmm. and we check them regularly, necessarily. Right. Um, read the newspapers, talk mm -hmm. to people, go to public forums like this one where we can air our views and our thinking and invite people to express theirs back to us. That's really important. I think just living in town, just if you're even remotely involved, you're going to find out what the pulse is, what, 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 is, what the problems are. And then most of it is, you know, the taxes are too high. I also, uh, I, it's, I know it's hard for some people, but I really appreciate when people come to the meetings and, yeah. and speak directly to us about, right. about issues. And so that's what I'm going to ask people to do, not right. only to come out and vote on March 4th, but to know that you have to register to vote if right. you have moved or if you've just moved into town by the 26th, which is by Wednesday the 26th of February. You can do it at the town clerk's office. You can do it um, by mail, mm -hmm. and then you can vote um, 20 days before the actual election. That's right. yeah, so the absentee mm -hmm. ballots yep. are available until the, the 5 p.m. Monday before the vote on Tuesday, the 4th of March. Right. And you if you it's 15 minutes out of your life, yeah. folks. It's <laughs> and 15 if you've got, minutes out of your life. And if you live in District 1, contact Orion Barber. If you're in District 2, contact Marshall Wheelock and see about being a representative at right. the time. Right. Great well, idea. And on behalf of the League of Women Voters, I thank the three of you for taking We could have time. done an hour and a half. You're right. <laughs> we could have. And I really am grateful for your service, grateful for the opportunity to talk about the important things from the town. The League has been concerned about having people active and informed participants in government. And you are great examples of it. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for so much for having us. And for having us. You're welcome. Get out and vote. <laughs>